Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? It did become official today that uh, Trevor Simeon has signed with the Chicago Bears. Two-year deal. So uh, the Saints, uh, we talked about it a bit yesterday. Saints uh, appear that they are moving on to Ian Book as their backup quarterback. They do have Blake Bortles on the roster, but uh, Trevor Simeon is headed to Chicago. It's a bit of an uh, odd decision for Simeon, un unless if he just didn't have the option of returning to the Saints, which is a very real possibility. The Saints just maybe just decided they were going to move on. But Simeon's going to Chicago, where Justin Fields is embedded and is going to be the starter. But remember, you've got Nick Foles there as well. So Simeon and Foles, theoretically, will battle to be Fields' backup. Uh, Foles has won a Super Bowl. He's been in Chicago. I, maybe maybe they're ready to move on from Nick Foles. I, I don't know. But um, I can't tell you know everything about Chicago. But it's sort of odd if you're Trevor Simeon that you would take that deal in Chicago. Uh, it would, would stand to reason that you would take the best opportunity you have to walk in and, and be somebody's number two. And I don't know that that exists in Chicago, but we'll see how all the uh, the chips fall there. But as for as for New Orleans, uh, Trevor Simeon out. So Ian Book um, is uh, is very likely your, your backup, unless if Blake Bortles wins that job. So that'll be the backup as they move into uh, in the camp. Uh, the Saints have made a free agent uh, acquisition today. Many of us have been waiting, and um, I know a lot of Saints fans are eagerly and earnestly hoping uh, that the Saints would do a deal for a free agent wide receiver. They apparently were very close to a deal with uh, Marquez Valdez Scantling from Green Bay, who um, took a three year deal instead of a two year deal uh, in New Orleans. So the Saints' uh, search for a for help a wide receiver continues. But they did sign a safety today, a safety from Kansas City, but not that safety from Kansas City. No, they they did not sign um, uh, Tyron Matthew. They signed uh, Daniel Sorensen. So Daniel Sorensen uh, agrees to a one-year deal with the New Orleans Saints as a safety. Um, this is interesting, uh, and typically if a move like this happens, it, it's you can read the tea leaves that something else uh, is is um is a is a miss here for uh, again Trevor Simeon going and 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 taking visits with the Bears and the Raiders told you there wasn't a deal for him in New Orleans he was moving on the fact that the Saints who've already signed Marcus May at safety and you know you've got Malcolm Jenkins there as well bringing in Daniel Sorensen effectively tells you that so someone currently on your roster probably isn't going to be there. Um, maybe that's P.J. Williams. You know, P.J. has played that sort of dime role who's been a versatile guy for you since you drafted him. You know, the hope was when you drafted him out of Florida State that maybe he could be a, an outside guy. It never really materialized for P.J. Williams in New Orleans there, but he has he has proven to be a very a versatile piece in your secondary. Maybe Sorensen is coming in to fill that role. I cannot imagine that he is going to take Malcolm Jenkins or uh, Marcus May's spot. Maybe it's a backup role. Um, in his career, Sorensen has played in 111 games. He's made 39 starts, uh, all eight seasons in Kansas City. Um, his best season, uh, the his best season of his career, um, was 2017. No, excuse me, it was two years ago, 2020. In Kansas City, um, started 11 games, made 91 tackles, a uh, couple of tackles for loss, uh, did um, did have three picks, so was productive a couple of seasons ago. Um, this past year, played in 17 games with seven starts for the Chiefs. Also had a nice season back in 2017 when he made 89 tackles. Uh, started 14 of the 15 games in which he played. So you're talking about a guy that's played a lot of football. Uh, was mostly a reserve. Uh, his first three years in the league, then then became a starter in Kansas City. And um, this past year, again, played in 17 games, all 17 games, made just seven starts, 51 tackles. Um, he did have a couple of interceptions. 
not a guy that's likely stepping here to be a starter, but a guy who probably fills a role as a, a nickel or dime back, a backup safety should you need it, special teams guy, and a one-year deal, so you would assume this is going to be a team-friendly deal, a cost-effective deal for New Orleans. What do we talk about all the time? I, I keep seeing a lot of the melt from Saints fans about why they haven't gone on and been more active in free agency to address their needs. But this is what the Saints do every year. The Saints always go out and sign a big-ticket free agent right away. I mean, we could talk... I mean, you can go back to... Jarris Bird or Kobe Fleener. I mean, you know the names through the years. Some of them end up on the Island of Misfit Toys, but they typically go make that big splash free agent signing right from jump, and then they wait. They re-sign their free agents, and then they go bargain shopping. They, they shop off the bargain rack, and that's what, that's what this is to sort of supplement their roster. So it would have been nice had they been able to land a receiver earlier this week in Valdez-Scantling. Didn't happen. I'm per personally okay with the Saints, I would love to see the Saints draft, use a high draft pick on a receiver. Um, I know there's generally this feeling that the team isn't, uh, you know, is is weaker than they were. I'm not sure I agree because you're going to get you're getting Michael Thomas back, which instantly makes your offense better. Having your best receiver, one of the best receivers in the game, there, so automatically guys like Callaway and um, you know and um, Deontay Hardy. I I, I got to retrain my brain not to just blurt out Deontay Harris to say Deontay Hardy. So I'm working on it. So forgive the pause. But all of those guys get to, to basically move down a chair and you're better with, with Mike Thomas back. So I don't think it's as urgent a need to go sign a receiver as some may think. So if there's places where you think you can supplement with a good player, do it. So uh, here you go. And, and the other thing that's very smart about waiting till now is you let the market, you let the market settle. Instead of jumping into free agency right away, unless if it's a player at a position you need, like you knew you weren't going to sign Marcus Williams, you needed a starting caliber safety, they went and signed Marcus May. Well, if you were super aggressive, there's a better chance you're going to overpay. You wait for the market to settle. Players learn what their market value is. And when you get two, three weeks into free agency, you realize, man, the phone ain't ringing. Teams have limited, you know, players have limited options. So the... The, the upper hand in the negotiation falls with the team, and that's what you see with a deal like this. So Sorensen had been in Kansas City for eight years. Uh, clearly, Kansas City was not interested in bringing him back. So he lands on a, a one-year deal with the Saints. And the Saints added a guy with a lot of experience who, who can be a versatile piece in the defensive backfield. And we'll see if that means maybe the end of, of the road in New Orleans for, for P.J. Williams. Maybe not, uh, but, but this would certainly signal that Something else is amiss when you've already got bodies at that position that likely somebody's on their way out. So Daniel Sorensen is the uh, latest free agent addition for the New Orleans Saints here with that addition come down on Friday. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.